he changes x by 2. And he's going to do this 15 times. So he turns a little bit more. If he hasn't bumped into something, move a little more. Turn, if he hasn't bumped into something, move a little more. Okay? Does this kind of left piece make sense? Cool. And so just from the last one, you can see this is just the right. We turn to the right instead, and we change x by 2 instead. Okay? That's the really complicated part. That's kind of cool. There's a lot. Of, I could I could write a lot of solutions for you that I thought were going to work and didn't work, um, and I can show those to you. But let's go into how these sensors work. The most important thing again, we have a forever go to player. So something that characters can do is they can go to other sprites. So these this is going to line these two sprites up. So Every time it goes through this, the sensors, which is what we're writing code for now, are going to go right to the red ball. So they're going to stick with him. No matter which direction he's told to go, the sensors will stay with him. So here we're handling the top and the bottom. So if blue is touching black, which means I have to outline all my bottoms in black. If blue is touching black, then I'm going to set up to true or up to yes, and, or otherwise I'm going to set up to false. Okay. Same thing here, if the red in my bottom piece is touching black, set down to true, otherwise set down to false. So I think the outlining everything in the same color is kind of an elegant solution um, to this. What, what does ghost effect do? Oh, sorry, ghost effect. There's a lot of effects that have funny names that don't mean anything until you try them. Um, ghost effect makes it invisible. So you could take a big screen on the front and say ghost effect, change ghost effect by 10, 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 and it would slowly fade out. And so this one is saying, I want to show it. Technically, if you're not showing it, then these colors won't be touching, which is a complication. But um, you need to show it, but you don't want it to be visible, so you can change its ghost effect to 100. A lot it's of... Right to zero. To zero. To zero. Oh, I think that that's a bug in my slide. I think it's supposed to be 100. What is it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 100 will show it. Is that, is that no, 100 it will make it totally transparent. But a lot of these have kind of bizarre lower and upper bounds. Like, who's to say 100 should be the maximum ghost effect? Maybe it should be... A thousand should be the maximum ghost effect. And what if you change the ghost effect from 100 to 200? What should happen? Should it become more transparent? I, you'll just have to like figure it out and test it. But I think that zero actually sets it, sets it to visible, uh, which is what I wanted to make this picture. Sorry. Um, <clears throat> then the other thing they do. So this code is exactly the same, except we've added this one piece. So the exactly the same part is, if I'm touching green, that's on my right side. If I'm touching yellow, that's on my left side. Set the left to true or false, OK? Um, and then also, I want to bound it from the outside of my window. I don't want my character to be able to go off the screen. And so I say, well, if the x position is greater than 225, that means I'm all the way on the far side. And just let him spin, but don't let him move in that direction anymore. Okay. And we can see how we already wrote the code for the actual little red guy for our player to respond to how these variables right and left were set. Yeah. Um, I think it's reasonable to give students an example of this. Or uh, you, There's a lot of solutions that are very, very plausible that your students will come up with that will not work and will not work for very, very complicated reasons. Um, so my, maybe after teaching sixth graders again next summer, I'll come up with some brilliant way to help students discover this. But so far, I've just um, given students examples of how these variables should be set. Even if, even if all I give them is um, this page. So if I just say, well, now I'm touching, I ran into the chair. What should be the new state of each of these variables? So I might act out what it should do and then let them program it, but still give them the basic logic. OK. So that's the gist of how uh, what I want to teach you about Scratch and share, about, sh share from my experience of teaching it. I want to hook you up with some resources. So the Scratch website 
The scratch educator. This is all in your handout. Um, I have all of my curriculum that has evolved through those different phases. I have that in an online form that I think actually Barbara and Ray are going to be using, or you are using. Um, and then Paul Bruno at Edinburgh uh, Middle School, we had some networking issues, yada, yada, yada. They couldn't access the server, yada, yada, yada. Did, did he's made that information? What's it? No, yeah, we'll work on that still. But he's, he's resigned to just using PowerPoints and Word docs, so he's not convinced that he should transfer. So um, I want to talk through some more details about these. So here's the Scratch website. Again, this is on your handout. Cool things are there's over a million projects. So your students can download things to see examples of things. Not only can they play the games or whatever someone's made in Scratch, but they can download it, see what blocks they use, see what scripts they use, see how they did it. And then they can change things and re-upload it. They can comment on other students' posts. This is uh, monitored by, they call them net nannies at MIT. So they're as quickly as possible trying to remove anything offensive. Okay, so um, I think a lot of school districts have problems um, or have explicitly blocked Scratch and are unwilling to whitelist Scratch, the Scratch website, but you can talk to your school districts about how like the Scratch net nannies are trying to cleanse this and are probably more effective at it than like the other stuff that your students can access. And the whole posse of kids, by the way. So they have 24-7 policing of that site. Right, they have kids worldwide policing stuff, too. Um, another thing is there are forums, so there are educator forums on there as well to discuss, like, oh, you know, I got this crazy curriculum from some girl at Berkeley and it's not working, <laughs> what should I do? Um, uh, another thing is they have scratch tours and scratch video tutorials. They've really gotten a lot better. Um, in maybe the last year about having educational resources to really help some a teacher or a student dive into these things. Uh, so these are other resources available to you. Check out the Scratch website. Check out some of the games that students are developing. The game I developed or I downloaded to pull the platform example from was really, really complicated, really sophisticated, maybe 20 levels. Um, and so it's just cool things that students are making and doing and showing off and sharing and contributing to this community. So it can be a community for your students, it can be a community for you. Very, very cool. Um, so, so when a person or when a student, say you log on or sign up for an account, are your students under your name? No, you're, it, uh, so it's complicated. If your students are older than 13, they can get their own account on here. Sorry. Um, I, Brian, no, no, can they can get their own account at any age. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, this is email up, address. When you click on sign up, uh -huh. um, it asks you a number of things, one of which is your uh, birth date. And it uses that to control how much information about you is visible to other people. Yeah. And it also asks you for your parents' email. And if they don't like send an email to your parent to make sure you resist or anything, but um, if you forget your password, uh, they will send that to your parents. So, so it's a little bit complicated. So they don't have to sign up for So teachers can't track. Yeah, you can't do a group. Oh, that can't. was one thing that really annoyed me, especially with the elementary kids that would post and forget to name things properly. So when I went to look for it, couldn't find it. But um, if you high school were no different. So for all of the all of the scratch projects that I've posted online, they're all on my Colleen Berkeley site and so if you go to Colleen Berkeley there's a unique web address that you can go to and you can see all the stuff I've posted so your students would need to share that with you for their projects and then all of their stuff that they posted would be there. So oh, is there any special account for a teacher? No. 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 So, so each similar to the email. Okay. Well, I actually asked MIT to if they could do a class group 